Good morning, my friends. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone's doing well and having a great week. I forgot to um, post that I was going to go live today. You know I usually do. So hopefully you'll come hang out with me. Good morning. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Michael. Kiss Art Studio. Good morning, Allie. Hi, Anita. Allie, I saw your question about reds. I pulled some reds out so we can play with them and see what's similar a red that you're looking for. Hi, Lee. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning, Ellen. I hope you are all doing well. Hi, Laura. Good morning, Rise and Shine. Yes, I was not quite ready for Rising and Shining this morning, I'll be honest. I was a little bit tired. Good morning, Martha. I probably look tired. I didn't sleep very well. Got up and read in the middle of the night, and it was productive reading time, but now I'm tired. It's like I wish I could manage when I when I sleep, but yeah, that doesn't happen. I don't can't seem to figure that out. Hi, Gail. Anyway, long story short, here... Um, I'm going to paint a kitten today. Let me show you. It's, um, a friend just got a kitten and they had this photo and it's just so cute that I, oh, I, I, oh, I worked on a big painting this weekend, Allie. Here, I'll show it to you. I think I might actually be finished with it. Now I can get that light out of the way. Here, I'll show you, see what you think. Here's my, it's a big peony. Oh, the light's glaring on it a little bit. It's a little more richer than it's looking in the in the light but oh my gosh it was so much fun and actually um I really can't figure out how to photograph my large paintings so I never really even have them on my website um well, I actually don't have that many right now because I had my my art show I'm going to do a few art shows this year so I've got to paint ahead but I went into Red Raven um, art gallery and Lee in there helped me photograph my big painting. So that was fun yesterday. Fun little journey. <clears throat> so she showed me how to do it, but of course I really don't, still don't know how to do it, but that's okay. I know the colors are fun, aren't they, Michael? I love, I love those kind of cools. I usually do all those warm pinks and to go in a whole other direction and do like, um, all those cool blues is really fun. So I have a little bit drawn on here just so I kind of know where things are going to go. When I do like pet portraits, I have paint all over my hands already. I was working on my um, my prompt for um, Happy You in 22. I'm behind on it. So I was working on the one for yesterday, today. But I already have paint all over myself. That's common though. I usually have paint all over myself by what is this, 8 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, definitely. need a few more paper towels. So I didn't finish quite, kind of getting ready, but okay. Let me stop talking and start thinking. Oops, get my medium out. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more challenging because there's not a lot of colors in here, but I am going to add colors. I'm thinking about, I do want to keep it, it's pretty much... Like those blues are cool and, and even the grays are cool grays, but there is warmth in his little face. Um, the kitten is named Sven. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just going to play. Yes, Happy You in 22. Um, that's a, a challenge that um, Lori Seibert and her daughter Snippets of Whimsy and Tracy Verdugo are doing. So I always want to do the challenges. They always look so fun and I always want to and never get around to it. And this time I dove right in <clears throat> and I'm, I, it's a lot. It's a lot to add that onto my plate when I feel like I can't keep up as it is. But I must say that I'm learning things from the practice of doing, mine are mostly abstracts, <coughs> but I'm learning a lot. I'd say about, um, what am I learning about? I need a warm brown, I think, here. I am <clears throat> um, learning more about being spontaneous, about abstraction. I don't know. I think all art's kind of abstract. But um, 
I don't know. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been a healthy exercise for me, I'd say. And there's a lot of, um, I also got a new blackout. I heard someone talking about, uh, oh, shoot, now I can't think what it is. It's called Chromatic Black by Gamblin. And I wrote myself a note. I wanted to try it. And then um, when Allie asked the question about reds, I was going through my bin, and of course I found chromatic black in there, so I already had it, which is great. So I'll try and let you know when I'm playing with that in here too. I'll do it while I'm mixing colors. <clears throat> oh, um, the challenge, go to Lori Seibert. Is that her? I think that's her handle on Instagram, Lori Seibert. No, and I, I think I can look on here. Do I have Instagram here? I don't use my iPad for much other than photo reference. I think she does a challenge every month or every other month. And she does uh, Lori Seibert Studio. So if you look on her page, all the prompts are, are right here. It's happy you in 22. So the prompts were joyful, ecstatic, peaceful, calm. And right now I'm down here on spontaneous and sassy, which is really fun, but I had to be spontaneous this morning. So trying to kind of illustrate abstract concepts like that, or at least capture it um, visually is, is a fun challenge. It's like graphic design, really. I mean, that's what I've always done um, as my business. So it's fun to think of things in that way. <coughs> oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going a little slow here. I'm not sure what I'm doing. But I'm always willing to make mistakes because that's how you learn. That's what I always say. Practice what I preach, right? <clears throat> How did you trace the eyes? Oh, I used, I just um, traced it on a little piece of tracing paper and then transferred it onto my panel. I, I, I did start talking about that. I do that when I do um, portraits, animal portraits, or, or I do a lot of wedding portraits for for friends and I to make sure like as long as you have kind of the eyes in the right spot it it's more believable um I find that if I have that off by a little bit I lose my confidence and then it all goes falls apart from there so I always want to practice not doing that but I'm not there yet okay where is the little cute little arm is here. I think it's right there. So I have to kind of map in where things are so that I don't kind of lose sight. Because I do. I If I don't, I need to put things in place to help me have confidence with where, where I'm going. Because confidence, I think, is a big part of the battle with, well, with anything in life. I guess I'll kind of, kind of put in this chair that he's leaning against gives him some, some um a place to be <clears throat> hi gabby how are you oh you're you're welcome gail and when i was working on this painting behind me i did a color combination that I love so I might play with that in here too I kind of kept the colors to the side I want to do one of my little um, swatches I'll get it out so I don't forget a little swatch and write down the colors because I have these little little swatches that I've been recording favorite colors <clears throat> side of his face is in shadow <laughs> in front of hundreds yeah 
I act like I have confidence. You know, half of it's just acting like you have it. I lose my way often. I lose my, my confidence. Especially when I'm painting large, because that's not where my comfort level is. And it's also really what I want to get better at doing. So I need to do it more. But it's such a time commitment to do it. It's hard to kind of stop life and do that. <clears throat> so this goes down here. <clears throat> Leave that light back here. I do want to add some spontaneity to it, too. I don't want it to get too... I did a really neat... Um, commission for a high school friend she gave it to her daughter for Christmas of her dog and it won this arches oil paper and she I got it framed it was really turned out pretty off the post in my story today I had a crazy busy day yesterday I didn't have time to think so I didn't get any um I didn't get to post or anything I have D's like that a lot of them yeah, finding the time to do all the things is sometimes really challenging. So, where's everybody listening from? Where do the large paintings sell? Better online or at shows? Oh, Ellen, definitely better in person. Although, I really never try to sell them online because I can't even get good photos of them. But I, in person, because buying art is such a personal thing, I think, and a big commitment that if, if people see it in person, I've found even just watching being at art shows, they fall in love with something. And then it's not even something they really have to think about. Whereas if you sell them online, it's hard to know what it really looks like, how you feel when you're seeing it, like all those kinds of things. Um, so I definitely think in person is the best. Just been a crazy year for all of that. I'm trying to think if I've ever sold large ones in, in, online. But I really don't think I ever am able to post them because I don't have good photos. Because then you also should have in situ, you know, in situations like um, photos of them in, in a beautiful space. And you can put them in those... Um, you know, ones that you buy, like the room scenes, but they look, they look canned, like they don't look authentic. Michael said, when you're doing this transparent layer, do you mix colors or you just straight from the tube? I'm mixing a little bit on my palette because um, I don't want just straight black colors, although like that yellow's straight. You wouldn't have to mix. I think I'm just, here, I'll show you. I'm just naturally doing, I have a little bit of mixture there, but not much. That's like the ultramarine blue and I have some transparent oxide brown this color so I am kind of mixing together a little bit but a lot a lot of times I don't I just pick up the colors that's more getting giving me the confidence to know that I have things in the right spot um I'm gonna do a little bit of A little bit of the lights hitting that might be a little dominant. I may have trouble. I may have to fight with that a little bit later, but that's okay. <clears throat> I love I love his little paws. Oh good, yes. And Allie, don't forget to let me forget to look at my reds here then and see if we can find you another option for a, a deep red. A true red, let's call it. So red's one of those colors that um, you can't really mix. If you need a true red, you can't really mix that from other colors. And Allie's looking for a red. I, I often use a Vasari red when I need that, but um, she's looking for an alternate color. Alternative. Alternate? Alternate color. It's not alternative, is it? there. <clears throat> I do 
my little six by sixes I finish early and this one I'll probably finish late. Uh, 1944, oh, that's fun, Allie. I have painted old trucks. I think I have one. Of, oh, I have one up here that I did years ago. Here's an old a truck that I did a long time ago. I have so much personality. Maybe I need to do a whole series of old trucks like that. <clears throat> I hear the geese flying. Um, I need to make this a little more brown. So my underpainting is just to kind of let me know where things are going to go, but also to give me a little bit of value structure too. <clears throat> Peril Scarlet is red. Oh, yeah. What, oh, yeah. Per, I think I did get a Peril. Is that how you say that? Peril? Peril? <clears throat> I have a few reds out here. So, cadmium red is probably the other best option, but that's not a healthy color. I turned not to use that. Perline red. Oh. My God, I might have that. Gamblin's. <coughs> Peril red. Do I have that out? Oh, I do. I have, well, I have Michael Harding's. So we'll look at that. That might be similar to Gamblin's. <clears throat> is that what it is, Gail? Is that your geese flying south? <clears throat> Isn't it a little late? I guess it really did just get really cold. Yeah, I would think they'd all be in Florida by now. Snowbirds, right? Isn't that what they call the old people, the older people who moved to Florida? Snowbirds. It'd be fun to be that. Go to Florida. Oh, I'm going to go to Florida for... The winter. I guess I should keep that light um, warm here. I don't know that I need to do much more. I think that's a good start. Um, <clears throat> just for the fun of it, I want a little bit of purple in there, I think. Sometimes that comes through then in the end. I do love when the, when the spontaneous colors show. I've already already said that. This. Okay, that's good. Now I'm over overworking it. I'm not getting not pushing myself forward, so I'm gonna clean up my palette. <clears throat> so this is I'm kinda out of my usual color palette. I wanna kind of do warm and cool grays. That's what a lot of that is. And I have a couple of grays that I got out. I have <clears throat> let me see what I have here. Davies Gray, is that what I used? And, oh, I did get up toward gray. So I think the blue that I love is with this Davies Gray. I'm gonna set that up here so I don't forget. <clears throat> oh, Ellen, I used my um, Zestit Clear Painting Medium on that layer, and now I won't use medium anymore. this over. <clears throat> Away. A little bit of light reflecting from above. Sorry about that. I can't really move that. All right, I need a sip of my coffee. I'm going to put toward gray out here too. So I want to get some warm and cool grays. I'm going to use some of that chromium black and see what I get. Chromatic black. A sip of my coffee. Everybody have a sip of your coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Allie. It's nice and clean. I cleaned it yesterday. It was a mess. It was a complete mess, especially when I work on a large painting. Yeah, I always have stuff. And Ellen, that's just from this morning. <laughs> it's crazy. <clears throat> All right, I'm thinking about where to start. I'm going to start with this chromatic black. 
and we're gonna try to warm it and cool it. So we'll just have that there. So we can warm it um, with a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. And then I'll do some of this. What did I say that? It's this um, torrid gray. I'm going to use some of my <clears throat> titanium buff. That is really lovely. Really nice. Maybe I should clean my tubes. <laughs> so should I, Ellen. <clears throat> I do use the crimper thing. I use this. You guys all have this. this to crimp my bottoms of my... That really is a lifesaver for me. For not wasting and... Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Keeping my things tidy my paint tubes that is something I've gotten in the habit it's hard to get in the habit of being organized but it really is a habit builder <clears throat> yeah I love the crimper too good morning Karen yeah I sip of my coffee so now I want to this is warm it doesn't really look warm to me it looks cool doesn't it warm <clears throat> and now I'm gonna go and make this cool so I'm gonna add manganese blue hue and make cool gray. So things are not warm or cool, really, unless they're next to something that makes them look warm or cool. And another thing that I'm trying to play around with is, is, um, <clears throat> purple, is working with neutral colors. Sometimes my paintings are so colorful that I'm trying to work on having the pause where you, um, <clears throat> I think I need all that in here. I think I went too light too quickly. <laughs> Crimper, that's the answer to the mess. I don't know that it keeps me tidy, Ellen, but <clears throat> it is fun and it's not a hard habit to build to use it. This might be too blue, so I'm going to add a little bit more black in there. I want to gray it a little more. Yeah, that's nicer. Still a little blue. It keeps the paint mixed at the... Yep, yeah, it does. <clears throat> Makes it ready to comes spilling out, although sometimes it comes out too quickly, but that's all right. <clears throat> um, and that's probably too, I'm going too blue. I'm just going to let that pile go. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, maybe I need this is out of my my color comfort zone i'm gonna put more of this what did i do with that black where did i put that i just showed it to you didn't i and it's gambling color those are all my reds here it is why not add orange to make it less blue i could do that let me try that and see if i like it because i do feel like it's too too blue although there are spots in there that are blue and i'll I don't have any orange out. Let me see. I'll just do a little bit of my Indian yellow in there and see what we got. Not. 
Now wasn't I, I was trying to go cool and that went totally warm. Now wait, I don't want that. Let me just get, well, I don't mind that one. Let's move that out of the way. I could use that. Let's put that right there and start again. Looks like King's Blue. Oh, <clears throat> I was using, this is, um, is that what you, oh, you know what, I have to do my pigment sticks too. I better get moving here today. I'm not going to finish. So this, I was using this. Actually, I, um, I need to get moving. They're very light. And then I'm gonna go. That's good. I, I don't mind that. I think that blue will work. Then I need to go a little bit more brown. Think that's good I don't want to take too long Ellen says lemon yellow and crimson orange to tone down and desaturate the blue lemon yellow and crimson to keep it cool cool orange to tone down and desaturate the blue oh no I think I'm just gonna stick with the blue good morning the flower that broke the pot um Need a little bit of bright blue for those dreamy eyes. All right, I need to stop fussing. Okay, let me go up here. Hi, Morgan. All right, so I might go in there and work on those eyes right away. But I have to do some pigment sticks just for the fun of it. <clears throat> yeah, blue, I'm loving blues right now, too, especially since I just um, did that painting that's behind me. I was enjoying my journey in blues. Oh, here it is. I have it. I have it. No worries. Helen, what'd you say? Am can't type. Love your messy middle. Oh, yeah, it's messy, all right. That's okay, right? Love a good messy middle. All right, let me play with those eyes. Um, pull my sleeves up because I always prop my arms on my desk. I can get the eyes okay, then I'll keep maintain confidence. I'm not sure that I have any. I don't know if it's about maintaining it. It's about finding it. And this eye is much darker over here. Oh, I think I can hear my music. I'm going to turn my music down. <clears throat> I have some. <laughs> Ellen, thank you. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I 
always hold my breath when I'm doing this part of the painting because it's um, always a little scary. Scary is not the right word. I just have to concentrate. It's really not scary at all. You always have to remember with painting, the worst thing that can happen is you hate it and you throw it away and you start over again. Then you get to do it all over again and you'll learn from it. So there's really nothing ever to lose. But I have to say, I have trouble taking risks sometimes. I do what's safe. I do what's comfortable. I guess we all do that in life, right? Oh, good morning, Emerson. <clears throat> How are you? I'm painting spin. there. Yes, every painting does have a lesson or a gift. Yeah, I guess you could look at it either way. Definitely does. I always think that art really, painting really gives me life lessons, totally. <clears throat> I love how it's like the cat has mascara or uh, eyeliner on. I think my cats will get jealous that I'm not painting them. They're not the jealous type. My cats have low maintenance. There. Those eyes look so close set, don't they? Just with the messy middle with nice eyes, the painting already looks done. I always love this part when it does look like that. It is pretty fun when it looks, when part of it looks finished and other parts of it look completely unfinished. I think that's something I'm always aiming toward too, but I want the unfinished to be more finished just feel unfinished like I don't quite know what I'm saying but I'm always kind of aiming, aiming for that I think that's that's a good start now let me get in here and good morning Barb Yeah, the unfin I love unfinished looking, but I don't want it to look like, I don't know. I haven't mastered it yet, but that's something that I'm always aiming for, a painting that looks like that, that looks finished in some ways and completely spontaneously unfinished in another way. Because I do love that stage of the painting. Just, maybe just a little bit past the messy middle. Just ever so slightly after the messy middle. What it looks like. <clears throat> and I 
love letting bits of that background color show through. <clears throat> yeah, some areas unfinished and other areas in detail. I guess that would definitely give you a roadmap of what to focus on when looking at a painting like that, right? Yeah, ermine is a very new color palette for me. A little challenging to do quickly, I think. I have to think a little bit more about my colors. And I wanted to look at reds here, too, before I finish with our alley. Now, so, okay, let me do a little bit of my background because I feel like I don't have this side of the face right. Oh, thank you, Karen. Thanks for your vote of confidence. And as usual, now I kind of feel like I didn't mix up enough color here. So what's everyone having today? Coffee or tea? I need to drink more of my coffee. Um, let me get out some white. I need more white, I think. Coffee. To my wonderful uh, mad, um, um, gosh, I cannot think today. face doesn't look turned and I'm not sure why um and the eyes my coffee's never strong enough what's What's the best dark coffee? I don't know. Probably French roast. I'm not, I don't know much about coffee myself. Even when I go to like Starbucks, I just get usually. No, I should, I do get, I love their um, mocha chip frappuccino. I tell you, the kids go there constantly to Starbucks. I usually only do it like if on a road trip and stop at a rest stop. Unless Izzy brings it home for me. Angle on the nose. You think I need to have, and that's too extreme, right? Well, I didn't even do that in there yet. Yeah, maybe it is the angle. So 
like this. Oh my goodness, so much thinking. The Stump Town, the Stump Town Coffee, the French Roast is one. Oh, where's that? Is that in downtown Pittsburgh, Michael? Stump Town Coffee. Yeah, Izzy's still home. She was supposed to go back on Monday, but we had that snowstorm. So I didn't want to send her on the plane because I wasn't sure if she'd even be able to get... Um, the bus and the friend who was going to pick her up just has a little Audi and wasn't comfortable driving of course not in so much snow so we still got to get her home get back to Pittsburgh <clears throat> it is La Lavazza Italy oh my gosh Karen I'm sure that's good I buy the beans online. Oh, out of Portland, Oregon. What's it called, Michael? I need to get a, uh, I don't have a, uh, I can't, I guess I do have an old one, but I would love to get the beans and do that myself. Probably not gonna happen. Sometimes I have to be honest and think, oh, I'm never going to get around to grinding my own beans. I wonder if the nose needs to come over a little bit like that. I think so. <clears throat> Kona coffee come from Kauai. Ka 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 how do you say that, Stumptown? It's the only coffee I have. I love their holiday blend. Oh, you probably, do you promote for them too? I'm thinking, do you have, you probably do. Stumptown Coffee, Portland, Oregon. Go check that out. Yeah, I get my fat cow coffee from my high school friend, Martha. They have their own coffee and they're building a little cafe here in nearby, which I'm excited about. I'm going to do a hint of this. Um, I didn't even do his pause yet. Gosh. Well, you'll forgive me if I don't finish. I'll have to finish it later. I don't know that I'm going to get it done. <laughs> Time is getting away from me, as it always does. It is looking pretty cool, though. You just, yes, that's the best promotion of all, is when you just love something. I agree. do these little cute little paws. Oh, thanks. Yes, it's come together. Like, yeah, that messy middle was a little scary, right? I'm not sure that I'm out of the woods yet, but I'm getting there. Definitely feeling more confident that it's coming together. that softness. I don't really need to do a lot with this texture in the chair. Just a hint of it. Um, of course, I still don't have enough 
paint on my palette. I always mix enough paint. Take my advice. Don't be skimpy with mixing of paint. It's so hard to like start mixing it again once you've kind of gone the wrong direction and you need more of a color. <clears throat> and you've run out. It's easier just to mix the right amount the first time. And it's not even that I'm being skimpy. I think I'm just so used to doing those tiny paintings now that I don't mix enough color. You should have seen me doing that big painting that's behind me. I had a lot of trouble um, mixing up enough. I need a bigger palette for that too. Okay, fill in some of those little holes. Thanks, Martha. some of these little nooks and crannies of paper that are showing. I don't mind them at the edge and I like these colors that are popping through. I want to push this maybe back a little bit and pull this side out a little bit. Too blue in here. Um,
Okay, let's see if you can hear me now. Um, okay, can you hear me now? Guys, let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Gabby? Yes, oh good. So I think what happened was I got a call from my mother-in-law's doctor's office because I called them with a question. And then when they left the message, I guess it just made it so that I couldn't talk. I don't know. Beats me. I'm just going to add a couple of these little wispies. And then I'll show you uh, red paints. I think I'm happy with it. I'm going to sign it. Sure was a messy middle in there, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. So let me move a little bit of, clean up a little bit of my paints here. I'll show you what I'm doing. Gets a phone call. Oh, the sound cuts out. But then how do you even, I thought I had it on Do Not Disturb. Oh, I know. It's not a nice, quick, easy whisker. All right, let me move this and we'll do a little bit of red here for Allie to see if I'm mixing this up as if, well, I guess I am gonna go um, live today with my inspiring art group and do um, paint white anem anemones. So I can just leave these on my palette. These are colors I could use, I don't know. They'll st <laughs> still be good till then. So if anybody's in my inspiring art group, um, I'm gonna go live at 11 today and Izzy's home so she's going to help me film which will be great <clears throat> all right so I have so this is the red that I often I'm doing this alley because Allie was looking for a true red so this is my Vasari true red that I use and I'll show you the the two it's called permanent bright red and then here's a quinacridone red that's darker. This here, and then this is pearl red. This is from that looks very close to this. This pearl red. This is a Michael Harding, but all the you know the other manufacturers have a pearl pearl red. P e p y r r o l e. And then here's a cad. Cadmiums are supposed to really not be good for you at all, but. And that's a true red also. I think maybe this Vasari red's nice because it is not a cadmium. So let me move that a little. That. And, and Allie, no, wait, what did you say? You're going to do a truck. Oh, um, if you send me a message and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know to, how to get in to do the Inspiring Art Group. I would say this Peril, Peril Red is the closest now Ellen's telling me she lost sound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me mix in. I'm going to use a little bit of this. I love this Williamsburg Montserrat orange as a color to mix in. You can mix in, you know, white or whatever, but just to see how the color lightens a little bit. So that's nice. Because I like, if you mix white into a red like that, then it often gets chalky looking and too pink so I use other colors so that's much pinker this quinacridone red is much more of a pink color so let's rule that out for sure and this is the peril red right it's a little deeper oh <laughs> sorry it's a little bit deeper and then this is cad red which is probably, this is closest to the cad red, but I would choose for a true red, the, not the Vasari bright, bright red, this peril red. And you know, you could get it. I'm sure Gamblin and probably Windsor Newton have it also. So it's a little deeper in color, but it's, it's a nice true red. Like that would be good to use for Cardinals and Anita's gonna paint a truck. So I think that will work. Um, what about adding a blue? Oh, just to show how it desaturates or green. I could do that. But um, 
yeah, I just wanted to show Allie because she was looking for a red that's not that. But yeah, this definitely went too pink. And like I usually use magenta and the permanent um, rose, but that neither one of those are true reds. Good. I hope that helped you. So sorry about the snafu of getting a call and losing sound. I hope it was okay. I was far, far enough along, I think, that it was good. Um, I actually stopped it, so I will upload it um, onto my YouTube channel and have the link on my website. And anything else? I don't know. Hope you enjoyed watching Sven come to life. That was very fun to paint. Um, and I hope you all are going to get the peril red. Yeah, I can't. Ali, share what you paint. I want to see it. What did you sign the cat with a pesto? Oh, I used, it's um, it's just a little rubber tip tool. You could use that back end of your paintbrush or something. But because it's wet into wet, you can just, paint, like, use your real signature. Better say, yeah, I hope so too, Anita. It's something I'm not very good at. So thanks for coming, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. And those of you in my Inspiring Art group, I'll see you at 11. See you soon. Bye.